நண்பர்கள் அனைவருக்கும் வணக்கம் எல்லோரும் நன்றாக இருப்பீர்கள் திஸ் ப்ரோக்ராம் இஸ் பிராட் டு யூ பை குருஜி டிவி திஸ் யூடியூப் வீடியோ இஸ் அ டிரான்ஸ்லேஷன் ஆஃப் த சேமல் வீடியோ ஆஃப் அ ரெனோண்ட் அஸ்ட்ராலஜர் ஜோதிஷ் மகாகுரு ஆதித்ய குருஜி The link of the original version that is the Tamil video is given in the description box of this video. This is astrologer Deepa and I am presenting you the English version of the Tamil video. In my last video I explained about the effects of moon in 12 different houses for the native of Aquarius ascendant. In this video I am going to explain the effects of the moon in 12 different houses for the native of Pisces ascendant. For the native of Pisces ascendant moon is yoga dipati because moon is lord of the 5th house. The 5th house signifies the purva punya sthana. In a natal chart there are three important pillars. The first and foremost strongest pillar is the ascendant itself. Then comes the 5th house which is another pillar of the building. and then comes finally the 9th house which is one of the most important pillars of the building therefore these pillars these three pillars form the basement for a building having said this for the native of pisces ascendant moon should not be spoiled at all moon should not be spoiled at all for the native of pisces ascendant because it signifies purva punya sthana What will happen when the 5th house lord is spoiled? It means there are no good children, there is no luck factor in the life. Now let me explain the effects of moon in the ascendant house itself which is Pisces. When moon resides in the ascendant house it should not be spoiled at all. It should not have connection of the natural malefic such as Saturn or Rahu. based on the strength of jupiter you have to make predictions for the native of pisces ascendant and pisces rashi when moon has good light energy and resides in the ascendant house itself the native is considered to be very fortunate person if the moon is waxing heading closely towards purnima or when it is purnima and residing in the ascendant house which is a trine house and quadrant house it will deliver a lot of benefits to the native of pisces ascendant when native is pisces ascendant and pisces rashi with waxing moon in the ascendant house the native will be a very good person he will possess such a good mind and stable mind the person will be very energetic and can manage any crucial situation these natives are capable of even transforming their challenges in their life to great achievements now let me explain the effects of the moon in the house of aries this is such an auspicious position the lord of the fifth house resides in the second house which is the house of wealth family and speech this will accelerate the financial status of the native definitely when the moon resides here it should be waxing or it should have a connection with natural benefits such as jupiter or venus in case the moon is waning there will be worse effects because here the fifth house lord is spoiled and the second house is also spoiled now let me explain the effects of the moon in the third house which is taurus in the house of taurus moon gets exalted the lord of the fifth house gets exalted in the third house this is extremely auspicious if the native is pisces ascendant and taurus rashi where the moon gets exalted which is the fifth house lord the benefits delivered are immeasurable the native will have a very good mother will possess a very good mind and he will be a very good person you have to definitely check whether the native will undergo 
the dasha of the moon that is major planetary period of the moon in his lifetime he should be able to distinguish between the effects of the karaka that is significance and the house effects you can find that the significance of a planet that is karaka of a planet is reflected throughout the lifetime and the house effects will be delivered only during the dasha of the planet when the moon is exalted it delivers a good mind and good mother to the native throughout the lifetime it will deliver good children to the native based on the house effects it will deliver good children and based on the significance of the moon it will deliver a good mind to the native because moon is the natural significator of the mother and since it has the responsibility of the fifth house it delivers good children as well therefore when the native is pisces ascendant and taurus rashi the native is considered to be highly fortunate it is very very auspicious now let me explain the effects of the moon in the fourth house which is gemini here the moon attains directional strength since it resides in the fourth house to the ascendant house as per bhavat bhavam lord of the fifth house resides in 12th house to its own house cancer this will not deliver any worse effects what is the reason because moon attains directional strength in the fourth house though the moon resides in the 12th house to its own house losing its tanabala it still has directional strength and it will deliver the 4000 effects definitely you have to definitely make predictions as the 5000 lot did not get spoiled in addition to this if it has a lot of light energy heading closely towards purnima or when it is purnima or when it has connection with natural benefits such as venus or jupiter moon will not deliver worse effects to the native therefore it is not a shortcoming for the native of pisces ascendant and gemini rashi since the moon attains directional strength in the fourth house to the ascendant house and therefore it will not deliver very bad effects it is the position where the moon can deliver benefits when the moon resides in the fourth house it should not be amavasya or it should not be in connection with saturn or rahu now let me explain the effects of the moon in the fifth house it is highly auspicious moon is such a great yogadipati for the native of pisces ascendant and when fifth house lord resides in the fifth house itself with tanabala it is considered to be highly auspicious based on the strength of the ascendant native can enjoy the benefits this is such an auspicious planetary position the combination of pisces ascendant and cancer rashi is highly auspicious because moon has got stanabala by residing in its own house and in addition to this if the moon is subhatva it will deliver added benefits this will definitely deliver benefits to the native let us assume that the natives of birth nakshatra is ailyam that is ashlesha then the native will enjoy the major planetary period of the moon and the benefits delivered by it at the right age let us say if the person is born at the end of ailyam that is ashlesha nakshatra it means the native will be enjoying the major planetary period of mercury first and then he will enjoy the dasha of ketu venus and sun for a total of 33 years and at middle age the native will enjoy the major planetary period of moon for 10 years this will deliver very great benefits therefore the native 
who is born in Ashlesha nakshatra will be intelligent and during middle age the person will enjoy the benefits delivered by the moon. When the moon is heading closely towards Purnima or when it is Purnima or when it has connection of natural benefits such as Jupiter or Venus, it will deliver great benefits. Therefore, when the fifth house lord resides in the fifth house itself, it is considered to be a very good planetary position and it is auspicious. Now let me explain the effects of the moon in the sixth house that is Leo. I will not definitely predict this as something bad provided Jupiter aspects this house. Yet it will not definitely deliver unfavorable results. The aspect of Jupiter is more than enough to act as an antidote. Even if moon has its own light energy heading closely towards Purnima or when it is Purnima, there will not be much worse effects. What will happen when 5th house lord is in 6th house? It will prevent getting a male child. It will push the native to make more efforts to get something. Though the benefits delivered by the moon are a bit less, it will not stop delivering the benefits. A noble man is always a noble man. Therefore, the combination of Pisces Ascendant and Leo Rashi is a good combo, even though the good effects are little less. Now, let me explain the effects of the moon in the house of Virgo, which is the seventh house. When the Lord of fifth house resides in seventh house, by being a waxing moon, or a moon which is heading closely towards Purnima, or if it is Purnima, it is a great benefit since moon aspects the ascendant house. It is considered to be a great fortune and highly auspicious when moon aspects the ascendant house with its own light energy or with the aspect of or conjunction of Jupiter or Venus. Here you don't need to consider whether it is a malefic or benefic. Even if it is a waning moon, let us say it has crossed two titis, post Purnima, that is Dithya Tithi, it is an added benefit. This will be very auspicious when the native is Pisces Ascendant and Virgo Rashi. Now let me explain the effects of moon in the 8th house which is Libra. The 5th house lord should not reside in the 8th house to the ascendant. A luminous planet should not reside in the 8th house. When it resides in the 8th house, moon should have its own light energy and it should stay Subhatva. When the moon is Subhatva in the 8th house, what will happen? It will let the native go abroad. The only antidote when moon resides in 8th house to the ascendant house is Subhatva of the moon. In general, moon should not reside in the 8th house. In case moon is Pabhatva in the 8th house to the ascendant house, it will definitely spoil the mind and the mother of the native. Moon will not deliver children at all to the native or even if it delivers children, it will make a situation that the children would not be able to call the mother as mother. Therefore, you have to take all the points which are opposite in effect to the auspiciousness of the fifth house. When the moon is Pabhatva in the eighth house, it indicates the children are spoiled or there is no luck factor. The only antidote is Subhatva. In addition to this, if the moon is in connection with Rahu or Saturn, it means the Pabhatva is more. There will be no children or there will be only female children. Even if the native gives birth to the female children, the mother would not be able to live with the female children. The native will not be able to take care of the children. Or the children will show a lot of hatred towards the native 
or the native will be in a position where he or she cannot take care of the children. The native himself or herself will be in a crucial situation where they cannot take care of the children. On top of all these, if the ascendant lord is spoiled, then the situation is much worse. Subhatva is the only antidote for all these hurdles in life. Please try to understand all these and please don't mistake me since I say few negative points. Now let me explain the effects of the moon in the ninth house that is Scorpio. The fifth house lord resides in the ninth house where it gets debilitated. However, lord of one trine resides in another trine. This is a huge benefit where the lord of one trine resides in another trine. When the moon resides in Scorpio as a full moon or a waxing moon, it will deliver great benefits. This is such an auspicious position for the native of Pisces ascendant. When moon is waxing or when it is Purnima, and when it has got the connection of Jupiter or Venus, while residing in the ninth house, it will deliver benefits. And based on the concept that the Lord of one trine resides in another trine, it is an added benefit. Please don't make prediction that the moon is debilitated and it will affect the native. Please make your predictions based on the light energy of the moon. In case if the moon is waning or when it has no light energy or when it is Amavasya with malafic connection, whatever good predictions that I told now will be upside down. Moon will affect everything. The fifth house lord is debilitated in the ninth house and if it is Amavasya or if it is heading closely towards Amavasya, and when it is in connection with Saturn or Rahu, it will affect the mother of the native, the children of the native, the mind of the native. The significance of the moon and the house effects will be spoiled. This is not considered to be good because moon is the lord of the fifth house and when it has no light energy residing with Pabatva, in Scorpio, it affects the children, it affects the fifth house effects. And when will all these events happen? All these good or bad events will happen during the major planetary period of the moon. You have to combine all the possible rules in order to make predictions. Astrology is not a simple topic, it is such a complex topic. There are a lot of combinations that you should not miss at all and you should not be agitated when you see a number of rules for making a single prediction. If the native does not undergo the major planetary period of the moon, the native need not worry about it because the native will not undergo or will not affect it by the bad effects of the moon. It is very important to predict when an event will happen. Now let me explain the effects of the moon in the 10th house that is Sagittarius. The 10th house is the house of Jupiter which is a natural benefit. Though as per Bhavat Bhavam, moon resides in 6th house to its own house, it resides in the house of Jupiter. It is good in a certain way. If it is waning, it is good because it resides in a quadrant house. When the moon resides in the house of Jupiter, and in addition to this, if it has got connection of natural benefits, conjunction or aspect of Jupiter, the moon will deliver all the benefits through the significance of the moon. Now let me explain the effects of moon in the 11th house that is Capricorn. It is an added benefit because when moon resides in Capricorn, it aspects its own house Cancer, which is the 5th house to the ascendant. 
If moon has light energy while residing in Capricorn, moon will deliver good children, great luck, a good mother, a good mind and all the benefits. Now let me explain the effects of the moon in the 12th house which is Aquarius, whose house lord is Saturn. What will happen when moon resides in the 12th house? When moon resides in Aquarius, it will aspect the 6th house to the ascendant and it is very close to the ascendant house. If the 12th house is Subhatva, then it will let the native travel abroad or travel to a distant place. When the 8th house is Subhatva and when moon which has good light energy resides in the 12th house, the native of Pisces ascendant will definitely travel abroad or to a distant place or to a neighboring state for earning the money and the moon will deliver such a benefit. So please don't predict that the 12th house is such an inauspicious house in this situation. However, it is very much necessary that when moon stays in the 12th house, it should be Subhatva. It should have its own light energy and connection with Jupiter or Venus to deliver extra benefits. For the native of Pisces ascendant, when moon resides in Scorpio, being debilitated, what are the possible predictions you can make? Please write your answers in the comment section of this video. In the description box, we have added the playlist link of all English videos so far published. The link of Aditya Guruji's website is given below in the description box of this video that is accessible by both iOS and Android users. The link of Google Play Store app is also given in the description box that is available for only Android users. The Tamil version of this video is also available. Please check the description box. Write your feedback to astro.writetous at gmail.com. Thank you.